I tell you, I'll tell you a funny story. <laughs> Angela's friend of mine in America, he's doing like a news program. And he's doing a 40-day thing of glory, like the righteous shall exalt the nation kind of thing, for 40 days before the election in America. And uh, uh, <laughs> and they're praying. And, as, and I've been praying. And as we're praying, the opponent of Donald Trump keeps falling down, down, down by the day. It's our prayers to expose the enemy. Because Donald Trump is the man for the job. He's the one that uh, America needs and the world needs. He can help stop the wars. He can help uh, reverse the economy back in a better way. He do a lot of things, stop the illegal immigration coming into our country. So he played the two women who ran against Donald Trump. <laughs> I'm laughing. Uh, Hillary Clinton and uh, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris. So, <laughs> so these women were raving mad at Trump. And the one in Hillary, is she's screaming at him. And then Kamala, she decided to do it now. It's like the same spirit, you know? <laughs> and she's screaming. So my friend, the evangelist, is moderating the video, and he's going, he puts his hand over his ears when the women are screaming. And he says, <laughs> yeah. he says, nobody likes a yelling woman. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he says, now I understand Bill Clinton and his philandering, because Hillary... She's rough, you know, all five feet tall of her. And she's screaming at Trump, and then Kamala's screaming at Trump, and they played them side to side. Same spirit, same energy, same, you know, uh, complaint, same anger. And I was like, oh, my God. That's noise that we don't need, yeah? So sound is very important. The Lord's been talking to me about worship. Worship, uh, the right sound is important. Uh, preaching and teaching, the right sound is important. Technically, with speakers and equipment and microphones and all these things, the, the, and, you know, recording, the right sound is important. Sounds, sight and sounds are very important. What you see and what you hear is very important that you see and hear the right thing. Now, Pastor was talking about, uh, you know, seeing the right man, seeing the right person instead of the wrong person. Very important. But the ingredients in what's happening is important by the Spirit of God. Very important. Very important. What you're seeing and what you're hearing. So, I'll say this. In 2016, 2015, I, actually 2000, go back to August 2015, I was in Nigeria preaching. And uh, I had a visitation of the Lord in my hotel room, and I saw Donald Trump. And then all of a sudden I turned the TV on, and there he was, on in Nigeria. Here comes Donald Trump. On the TV, doing what? Making the announcement that he's going to run for president. I was like, oh my God. I was just seeing that or feeling that. And God had me prophesy. The Lord spoke to me. He said, thus saith the Lord, Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States. Now every president in Kenya, since Mwai Kibaki, the first free election, uh, the first free election, because I understand Moy, Daniel Moy, uh, came in maybe not through election, right? Something like that, yes? Very unscrupulous uh, things happening in the African countries with the coups and takeovers and underminings of other governments. And so the first free election, now, you know, Jomo Kenyatta, the first president, uh, there was nothing that was going to elect him. He got in with the British. 
and he did his thing, and he became the man that presented himself, and he took it. Okay? No one had to vote for him. And then Moy came in number two through however that all happened, right? And then one another guy tried to have a coup in 1982. It even rhymes, right? And that didn't work. You see all these things were going on. But then God had visited me and had me prophesy about the collapse of the Moy regime. And I said it in June of, 2000 and, uh, the June of the year 2000. He'd been in power as a dictator for 24 years. And the Lord said, no more. I, it's none of my business. You think it's me? You think I come to fight with somebody? I have a pride from America. And I was in London, England. What business do I have to come to Africa? It wasn't my choice. They invited me to a huge conference. It was at the KICC. 10,000 people showed up. There's only about 5,000 seats in the venue. 6,000 maybe. And the place was packed. Along the walls, there, there was no seats. People were standing around the walls. And thousands of people were outside that couldn't get in. <clears throat> and back then, they had the sign. We had photographs from that. Canu Headquarters. Canu Head, K-A-N-U. Canu Headquarters on the KICC building. And that was the government structure at the time. I think the party of Moy, yes? And uh, I, I stood on the platform... And the heavens open. You talk about the office of the prophet, how God won't do anything except he reveals a secret to his servant. The prophet that's found in Amos 3, 7. And the Lord said, the Lord said, I will have this regime. I, I can, I'm trying to say it in a nice way because I don't, you know, I'm still trying to, I don't want to sugarcoat it, but it wasn't very polite or impolite the way God said it. God just said that the regime is going to end and that's what he said. I won't embellish the, the wording that he used and all that, but uh, how can I say it <coughs> in a very neutral, nice way? I don't know. But the Lord said uh, this government will collapse, implode, and be no more, and then there'll be a new election call for, and I'm going to cause a new, a new government to come into place in the nation of Kenya. I said this in June of 2000. At that time, there was no foresight of anyone or anything in any way, naturally or spiritually, that anyone could see that a change would come. Well, within a year and a half, Within about another year to 2001, into early 2002 maybe, it, it all began to happen. And then finally, whatever happened, see, it's none of my business because I'm not from here. I'm from America. I don't know all of the, I know some of the details, but I don't know all of them. And the Lord began to say that the new government would be called for, there'll be a, an election, and that was arranged for December of 2002. Then, 14 days before the election, let me, go back to, let me go back to the KICC building. God had me lay my hands on. The, the Lord had me to uh, walk off the platform and lay my hands on every person in the building. I think I laid my hands on 6,000 people, myself. And every single one of them fell to the floor. In fact, I started to go fast. And they were flying, and bodies were piling up everywhere, thousands and thousands of people. People fell through the chairs, all around the walls, the platform, the stage. That, uh, then uh, there was a time on the platform, there was a bunch of people there, and we just waved fire, and they all fell back. Some actually uh, fell, almost fell through the back of the stage down to the... <laughs> it was terrible. People were flying everywhere. And uh, my hands were blood red, like you painted my hands with paint, with red paint for the next 24 hours. And I had no sensation. I had like a numb, hot feeling in my hands for 24, the, a full day. Because the power and the glory of God came through my hands with such force. It, it, it was amazing. I, it was amazing. And, and uh, God said, there'll be death. There'll be judgment. There'll be changes. There'll be this. There'll be that. And one of the uh, men died, I understand, the vice president, somebody like that. People told me all the stories afterwards. 
I saw the cloud from heaven come, and God said, over East Africa, I'm going to cause change, and, and, I'm, and I'm opening up the heavens over this land. I mean, that's what God had me fly from Europe to do there for one day. I stayed for one day, and I left. And people said to me, you know, the government, they have people in these meetings listening to these uh, back, especially back then. Especially back then under the dictatorship, you know. It's very dangerous to say something like that. I began to laugh at the, this prominent attorney. He looked at me, very puzzled. He looked very nervous. His face was kind of a little bit twisted up. He's like, I started to laugh. And then he just sat back and folded his arms and looked at me. And I said, sir, do you think that I had nothing else to do but to come all the way from Europe to Africa, my first time on the continent, to come and prophesy such a thing like that? He, he sat back and he went, oh, I see. That was God talking. <laughs> Lift your hands. That was God. That was God, not man. And if I had said it anyway, would it happen because of Thomas? How? But it's going to happen because of Jesus. Can you say amen? Yeah. He's the boss. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of nations. Praise the Lord. Yeah. He sets up kings. He takes down kings. He's the one. God does it. <laughs> wow, glory. So speed up in time. A year and a half later, December 13th, 2002, it was a Friday afternoon about 1 o'clock p.m. Oh. I was in Hertfordshire, England, north of London. And I was sitting on the side of the bed where I was staying, and I just sat down for a minute, and the Lord said to me, Son, get your recorder. I'm going to speak to Kenya. Back then, this is 20, that's 22 years ago, yes? Yeah, we didn't have uh, digital recorders and Facebook and uh, walk around with, with digital cameras and all that, you know. We, we had a, a tape recorder with a cassette tape. 90 minute tape so I put the tape in it's a big like a box like this and I push the two buttons on the top record and play and for 25 minutes these made the most amazing words came out of me to speak over the nation of Kenya so the Lord decided to speak he spoke about Nairobi becoming a world-class cosmopolitan city now maybe over here i don't know how much you know about all that but i'm speaking to the whole nation right now praise the lord i'm doing the best i can in the environment to to do it but i'm doing it and the lord said and funny enough i i found this suit that i had it's like my arch i call this my archbishop suit yeah i look like archbishop now my archbishop see he wears these kind of checkered checkered suits you know and i i, I said i I put on my Italian dress shoes, but I thought, no, nah, i just wear my Nike Air Maxes. It's okay. They're very comfortable. They got the cushion in the back. When you go like this, you bounce. They bounce. So it's like very, very comfortable, very comfortable. And when you walk, they kind of go down. Like, it's very nice. Yeah. So Archbishop, praise the Lord. It's my Archbishop suit today. There we go. I was going to wear a gold satin shirt, but I didn't think the color matched too well. So I said, Let black, you know, black goes with everything. You should be happy about that. Black goes with everything. Are you, am I white and you're black? White goes with everything too. Two colors that go with everything, white and black. But black goes with everything. See, my watch is black, the black. You could wear this with any other color. Praise the Lord. My microphone is black, <clears throat> my recorder is black, my Bible is black. Woo! Hallelujah. So the Lord spoke so many things about Kenya. That prophecy is like six typewritten pages, five, five full pages, A4, 
and a, maybe another paragraph, so six. And the print shops, back then they didn't have social media, but people sent it by email to everybody. And the print shops were loving me. They see my name, Thomas Manton, USA. Oh, we love this man. When I came, some were like looking at me smiling because they made so much money printing the copies of the prophecy for people. I met even Archbishop Harrison, Nanga himself, and others. They still have their original copies. Many pastors, many people, they were walking around with them folded in their bag for years. They spilled tea on it. They got chip grease on it. They, they, they folded it till the edges were coming and making holes like you want to make a design of origami, Japanese origami art. You cut the paper, when you open it up, it makes a figure, you know? They carried them for years. I, I met people. Uh, when I came, we had a great outpouring. People had them in their bags. Prophet, I have your prophecy here. I, I met an apostle last week, uh, and, and uh, I don't know what was to come of it, but uh, he, pray, he prayed a prophetic prayer. He said, God has you here to bless you. I'm waiting for the blessing. Because he said, your harvest and reward is sure, and it's coming. I'm waiting day by day. Any day it's going to happen, and I'm excited. I think that's the purpose of my life right now. But I'm never going to stop going to preach and teach and do things and bless people. I'm never going to stop. I just made that decision. It doesn't matter where I'm going. It doesn't matter what happens there. I'm not going to stop doing it. Can you say amen? amen? We're recording. We're putting it out to the world. That's my work. I'm never going to stop doing it. But God is about to bless me in ways you've not even imagined. And he, this guy confirmed that. I thought, this is great. This is great. This is great. In fact, I was just sitting out in the car outside, and I was thinking, praying about that. Lord, I, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. So, but we still need a short person or a really smart kid about 10 years old. Let me ordain that kid right there. He looks very fast. This guy, he's running. Go and say, go in there, find the power plug, and just pull it and run back out. And you're so small, you'll be hidden behind the chairs. Maybe no one will see you, like pew, pew. And then we'll have. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> so. See, this street, I got to explain to the viewers, this street, like we have a church here, I'm in the church here, my, my dear pastor friend here, and his wife and his baby here, Benjamin. What's your name, Mom? What's your name? Huh? Veronica. What's the baby's name? Huh? Joy. Benjamin, Veronica, and Joy. Yes, and all the other happy people. And then next door, in fact, when I leave here, we're going over there next door to preach there. One, two. is it amazing? Back to back. And I pray we do it quick. Harakisha. Let's go. Twin day, twin day. Move, move. Let's go. One, two, boom. We go. And I have a third meeting on the other side of the city after this. So praise the Lord. So the Lord spoke such amazing things about Kenya. When there was nothing like that even remotely possible... When you have a dictator in power 24 years, people may cry about it and pray about it, but they just don't know when the prayer is going to get answered. And then here comes a prophet out of nowhere. They didn't know. Nobody knew who I was then. I mean, who, nobody knew me. We have pictures from that on the KICC platform. I was wearing a three-piece suit, very nice suit. Uh, I think I still have that suit somewhere. Maybe it's in America or in, Lo in London I, somewhere. But, uh, <clears throat> man, and the thousands of people with their hands in the air in the Sabo ballroom, it was, it was, it was packed outside. There were thousands outside that couldn't get in. Every seat was gone, and there were people around the walls. And God set the stage there for, for, for him to come on the stage, on the scene, and begin to speak over East Africa and speak over the nation of Kenya. Everything began to change from then. So I'm in London, Hertfordshire, England, uh, just in the north, north, just north of London, and the Lord speaks to me. I'm going to speak to Kenya. So I put my recorder on. I hit, I hit record. Boom! I start to speak. Thus saith the Lord to the nation of Kenya. You see this in print.
And if, if you don't have it, it's available. We have copies of it. We have copies of it. We, we, in fact, I want to make it and put it in a book. I want to take all the prophecies. And I told Archbishop Harrison Nanga, we, we had a meeting together, him and his wife and his executive office. We sat together and he, I told him, I gave him a copy of the whole thing. I said, I want to make this one of the books because people are asking for the, for the, for the prophecies. 2000, I uh, have to rewrite that. 2002 is already done. 2004, 2007, 2008, 2009. And every year since then, there was another prophecy. 13, the election. 17, the election. People started asking me in 2012, what about 2012? You like to say 20. You don't say 2000 and. I, in America, we say 2000 and. It's really, more, it's really more accurate, specifically. But you say 2012. What's going to happen in 2012? I went like this. No, I don't know. Nothing. Sure enough. Other people coming out. In 2012, this is what's going to happen in the election. Sit down. Sit down. You, because nothing happened in 2012. And God didn't let me speak. Because the, it turned out that the election was not going to happen in 20, 2012. It was postponed to 2013. How many remember that? So if I had said in 2012, or like you like to say in Kenya, in 2012... Or Indians, you say 2012. 2012. 12. They don't say 12, they say 12. Yeah. What am I talking about? What was I thinking? It's 12. It wasn't 12, it was 13. <clears throat> And the Lord said, Uhuru Kenyatta is my choice to be the next president of Kenya. After, that was the second time. 2007, the Lord said, Mwai Kibaki will be reelected. In 2002, Mwai Kibaki will be the Joseph, the administrator, the one who's going to uh, shape the economy and help Kenya. And you know, that man did so many things. It's very sad to see in his old age how people messed him up. And he just went off and died in obscurity. I, I, I couldn't get involved, you know. I didn't know how to find him. Or people just always blocking the way and doing stupid things. And, uh, you know, I was going to go get him and shake him, you know, and say, look here, write your memoirs. Write a book. Get a journalist to come in here and interview. If you don't want to write yourself, just talk and let them record. Because you have a lot of wisdom that needs to be released to the next generation. It never happened. Let me tell you some evil people that get in the way of a great leader have a special place of judgment. Let me tell you. Lift your hands right now. And thank God it's not you. People that get in the way or try to hurt a good leader, even a prophet like myself, even a great apostle, a great le spiritual leader, or a great political leader, someone who really has something for the people, you want to mess up with them, you have a special place of judgment. And I'll say something else. The one that tried to mess him up so much will never go anywhere in life. He'll never be anything. Nothing will become of him. The hand of God has already said the door is closed forever on you. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So Kenya began to sail upward. And we'll talk more about that another time. Let me get back to the upcoming election. November 5th, Tuesday, in like less than three weeks from now. Yeah, in fact, it's two weeks from Tuesday. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, two days from now is Tuesday, today's Sunday. And then, so is it 16 or 17 days only? And the Lord's had me praying. I didn't, I didn't finish the point about in 2015, I was in Nigeria, and the Lord had me speak about Donald Trump becoming the president. Man, I'm telling you, there was all kinds of hell breaking loose. People called me all kinds of names. I released it online. You have no idea the slander and the abuse and the, what, the nasty people, how they wrote nasty. I, I didn't really care, you know, because I know I'm right. You know what? Confidence, number one, comes from knowing you're right. If you're right, you're right. That gives you great confidence. And the whole world could be wrong, but I know that I'm right. 
<laughs> and when you're right, you have God on your side because he's the God of the righteous. He's the righteous judge. Righteous. Right. R-I-G-H-T-E-O-U-S. Righteous. He's right. Praise the Lord. So if you're right, you're right, and you have a good place to stand on, a good platform to stand on in life, because you're right. So, the Lord said that, that he gave, he gave me an intercessory assignment. He said, son, I want you to take down Hillary Clinton. I want you to dethrone her. I prayed for eight months. Sometimes I didn't, t I didn't sleep much. And then it got to the and I prayed and prayed and prayed and prophesied and prayed and declared and prayed by myself. I didn't make it public. I didn't go tell the world. I didn't have whole groups of people come to pray with me. I just prayed by myself as his prophet. Like Elijah. Where does it say Elijah had all these people around him and he was having all these meetings and telling them everything? No, he was walking as God's prophet. Changing things in the nation. Changing things for people. Destroying the prophets of Baal. Prophesying against Jezebel and Ahab. Praise the Lord. He said, hey, he said, Jezebel, you want to kill me? Guess what? The dogs will eat your flesh at the wall of Jezreel. You know, Je Jezebel, her own staff threw her out the window. The eunuchs killed her. The eunuchs threw her out the window. They found a way. She got near the window. They said, now's our time, boys. But they weren't really boys anymore. You know what I mean? Eunuchs, I had a pro they had a problem, okay? So they were like, okay, boys or half boys. Go, push. I love guys like that. And the four lepers in 2 Kings 7. They said, why should we sit here till we die? If we take a risk, we could die. If we sit here, we're going to die. We have nothing. So let's go for it. And they caused confusion and derision in the camp of the enemy, and they took the spoils, and they were the ones to laugh themselves. Four little guys destroyed a whole kingdom. Lift your hands. God doesn't need so many people all the time. He could use one person. It's good to have a big crowd. It's good to have many thousands of people. I just told you about a meeting we had. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people. We've ministered to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Let me tell you, the prophecy for the Kenya election, I got four million hits on my website. Four million, four million. Four million views, four million on my website. Is that a few people? It's a large crowd. So we believe in big crowds. But sometimes God could ju use just you. Praise the Lord. So sure enough, here comes election day, 2016, November, the first Tuesday. It's always the first Tuesday of November. Funny enough, my father's birthday is November 3rd. And some years, his, his election day would be his birthday, and he would win the election on his birthday. My father was a great political leader in America. He was reelected in Congress how many times? I think he was in... Uh, Maybe eight, seven or eight times he was reelected because they, they vote every two years. And he was in it for 14, at least 14 years that I can remember. So I think he had seven different elections. And my father was the political boss of New York for 30 years of the party. Everybody that's big, the mayor, the governor, all the people, the business industrialists, they used to consult my father for his wisdom. And they said but they succeeded in politics because of my father's wisdom. Even Michael Bloomberg, who's one of the richest men in the world, he's worth almost 100, he's worth about $100 billion. He's one of the top t uh, 10 or top 15 or 20 on the Forbes list. One of the richest men in the world. He ran for president, he didn't do well. <laughs> Politically, he washed out. But in business, the man is brilliant, okay? So, but my father helped him to become the mayor of New York City. My father helped him, all right? My father also helped Rodney Howard Brown get Madison Square Garden for his Good News New York Crusade in 1999, I think it was, 1999, yeah. 
the big one that he did for six weeks in Madison Square Garden. My father, I asked my dad to help him, and he got all the permits with the unions and stuff for, to get, because it's very hard to get the venue. My father was the one who did that for Rodney Howard Brown. So my father was a great man, and I, Jesus came to me, and I brought Jesus to him, and he's in heaven now, praise the Lord, Amen. with my mom and my grandparents. I led them all to the Lord. And we were not a Christian family at all. So thank God for the grace. Thank God for salvation. So, election day comes 2016. <clears throat> and the whole day they were still saying, Hillary is up. Hillary is, and they were saying Hillary was up by so many points in all the polls. The polls were skewed and flawed. And uh, <clears throat> sure enough, <clears throat> at 2 o'clock in the morning, 1 a.m. or 2 a.m., the next day, Wednesday, is when the results were finally coming out. And uh, it was amazing. Trump began to win state by state. Boom, Trump. Boom, Trump. Boom, Trump. Boom, Trump. And the whole world was screaming and crying. Wah! Demons were... That's when you had noise, you know, like some preachers. Wah! But it wasn't the Holy Ghost. It was demons through liberals. Yeah, so I wonder sometimes where these people get their pattern from. Like, please, if you're going to preach, please don't sound like a demon screaming. Please don't. All right? And let it be a beautiful sound. You know, I was telling you about sound. Let it be a beautiful sound, okay? So, <laughs> not some crazy noise from the, from the horror movie. Praise the Lord. I checked my pulse yesterday. It's a little bit low, and I was good. I thought this morning I, I forgot to make a joke with the doctor. I was going to make a joke and say, you know, really, I'm a zombie, you know? <laughs> checked his pulse, zero. Checked his blood pressure, zero. Checked his blood. <laughs> so I'll just go like this. <laughs> you don't know if I'm real or I'm one of the. The zombie apocalypse has come early, you know? Praise the Lord. But I didn't say that. So, God likes to put good people into positions, and the devil is the one that wants to mess up with them. But when you're right and on the right side, you'll always have God as your defender and your friend. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. So you, uh, thank you for being attentive. Let's pray in the Spirit right now. Everybody praying right now, praying, just pray. Not loud, don't be doing that noise, just pray quietly, parasha. <laughs> Ask the Lord to use you. Ask the Lord to make you right in this world. Then you'll have, you'll have him as your friend, you know, like Abraham. Abraham couldn't lose. Moses couldn't lose, although it was tough battles along the way, because God came and healed him. And then gave him double for his trouble. And all those people, like his wife, that were saying, curse God and die, and his crazy friends who were talking all kinds of nonsense. They, nothing is said about them later. And you had Lot, nephew of Abraham. Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. She was evil. She wanted to stay in Sodom. But God was telling them to move to the next place, and she didn't want to go. So she was turned into a pillar of salt. She wasn't right, but even Lot, you know, he was crossing wires with Abraham, he still went out to, and inherited some land because he, he moved. You know. <clears throat> so God is always the one that wants to cause people to move into things for the better. Under the current administration in America, things are moving toward hell, not heaven. Things are moving. I've been moving for three, almost three and a half years, going on four years. They've been moving in the direction of hell for America and the world, not heaven. So Donald Trump is the one who can turn that around. He's the only one that can do it now. And I have prayed for protection on his life. They tried to shoot him. They tried to kill him. They tried to impeach him. They tried to assassinate him. 
They tried to drag him through the, the legal system. They try to mess him up. They slander his name. They attack him every day. But still he keeps going because he's on a holy mission. Why? Because he's right. And Donald Trump has become a Christian. He's accepted the Lord. I don't care what he did. I mean, what are you going to care what you did? What did you do when you, before you were saved? Would you like people to stand you up and say, now look at your life. And you did this and you did that. Oh, look at that bad person. No one has a right to say that because all that's under the blood. It's gone. If you come to the Lord, all that stuff is washed away. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He, and he's a good man. He wants to help. He really has it in his blood and his, his passion. Even his blood was running on his face after his ear got hit by the bullet, was crying. He stood up and said, fight, fight, fight. Even his blood was moving and saying, let's go, let's go. That's the kind of man he is. But the lady, oh, and her boss, she was asked a question. She was asked a question, what would you do differently than the disaster that Joe Biden has done? She said, mm, I can't think of anything. I was like, you, the election is over. It's over. Right there, it's over. You forfeited. You waved the white flag. Defeat, defeat, it's over. Goodbye. <clears throat> Goodbye. Call Harry. Good night. What a complete, can you imagine? She tried to attack Trump. I saw this on the news. She tried to attack Trump and saying, oh, He's like tired and he can't do anything and because there was a moment where there was a glitch in the music and the thing and he just stood there and acted like the MC, like just danced a little bit to the songs. They're really not like him. So they try to take advantage of that moment. They're so desperate. They'll just reach for anything because they're losing. And then they, he was asked a question by a reporter. She says, you're like uh, having a problem. He, he said, look here. When did I ever take a rest? He said, for the last 47 days or 45 days, whichever he said, I haven't rested once. He said, this morning I was on Fox and Friends News. Then I did another interview. Then I did another one. Then I made 15 phone calls. Then I flew in my jet over to here to this rally right now. When am I resting? And he said, I'm not even tired. I'm exhilarated. Why? Because we're crushing her in the polls. See, even him, he's not just looking at what he's doing day by day, but what result is it bringing him to? He said, because we're winning, it's all worthwhile. Lift your hands. We win. We win in every way. Catch the wisdom of this. I told you before, study the lives of great men. I know I've said it in my videos many times. Study the lives of great leaders. And try to catch what they've done and try to emulate what they've done and you'll get the results they have. Nothing happens by chance. Destiny, and by the way, destiny is spelled D-E-S-T-I-N-Y in case anybody didn't know. And, uh, yeah. And destiny is not left up to chance, but it's a matter of choice. You choose or you lose. You snooze, you lose. You got to take it. Advantage of the thing. I was talking to one woman because I had a very strong revelation of my spirit. I, I don't think she understood me. You know, religious people, they don't get certain things you say. And I was like, trust God, trust God, trust God. Everybody says, trust God. I said, that's not enough. And I was really feeling hot. I said, you know what? We got to take action. She looked at me like, as if I was saying, don't trust God. Of course we trust God. Hello? We trust God in everything. But you trusting God doesn't mean you're going to get a result or a difference in something that you want when you don't do anything about it. God, the Bible says, is in heaven. And the earth, he's given to the children of men. He didn't say he saved people. He said the offspring, the human people on the earth, whatever they are, that's who the earth belongs to. So you have to make up your mind to go and do something. You want something different, you got to go do something different. If when you want something, Dr. Mike Murdoch, I'll, I'll give him the credit for this because it's his quote. My dear friend, Dr. Mike Murdoch says, when you want something you've never had, you have to do something you've never done. So do it. Do something different. You'll get a different result. 
Proverbs backs that up saying cause and effect. You get cause and effect. Nothing happens by chance. It happens by change. And change comes for the better when you do something about it. So I was bold enough to come out and let God use me to prophesy all these things. I'm prophesying again. Because I prayed. The Lord didn't tell me to make the announcement, but I think I'm kind of doing that. I had a vision. I had a vision. I saw, I saw uh, the Electoral College in America, the red. Red is the color of Republican. Blue is the cover, uh, color of Democrat. I don't know why, but I saw the red flash. Electoral College win. Now, I'm praying he breaks 300 points. But he only needs 270 to win, to win it, 270. But I almost see like it can go beyond 300 if he wins a lot of the states. And this time, he should win the popular vote. Hillary Clinton actually, I think, won the popular vote. She got more votes. But she lost in the Electoral College when they make a points by state. You know why they do that? A lot of people here that wouldn't understand such a thing. Many other countries, they wouldn't understand. Because there are population sectors that lean different ways. You might have a tribe, you see, you might have a tribe in an area that's going to vote tribal, right? In Kenya, it's a lot of corruption, a lot of things. People don't care enough yet. But maybe you should divide it up by tribes. That one tribe can't just swing the vote because of their population. But you haven't got that far yet, but maybe in the future. So this state that's going to lean this way, gets a certain amount of points. But the rest of the states has a different point value if you win those. That way, it, the, it's fair across the whole country. It's very fair that no one group can swing it like that. And they call it the electoral college vote. So you don't have to win the amount of votes. So many million, so many million. You could win by the states. And Trump right now is swinging. All of the swing states are going in his favor. And she's going down, down, down by the day. Every time she comes out to give an interview, it's like a disaster. Because she's unqualified. She has nothing. And she cannot be the president of the United States of America. I'm standing in the way of that. I'm God's prophet. And I don't have to say, you know, thus saith the Lord, Donald Trump is the 47th president. I think I'm saying it in a different way. Because I prayed. Every morning the anointing would come on me for months praying for him. God protected his life twice. They shot at him. And he didn't get, he didn't get uh, just one hit his ear. The other one missed. I saw him on a, the video last night and I felt the anointing and I prayed to God. Put your glory around him more that nothing can penetrate him or his family. Everything's going to go well for America. And then everything's going to begin to go better for the world. <clears throat> if you think America's not important, let these other people win. And they give it all over to Iran and China and Russia and whoever. The, the world will come to an end. The economies of the world will crash. This thing that's come against the dollar will flourish. They'll try to control things with the digital uh, uh, central banks and all that. They'll, they'll go toward that whole thing. It's just like the most liberal, psychotic policies that are satanic and evil are in the one that's running against President Trump. And we can't have it. Lift your hands. No apology for this message. I, I can't. I say... When I stand in a pulpit, I will be possessed by the Holy Spirit, and he will speak through me what he wants to say. That's not negotiable. Wherever I go, wherever I am, that's how it is. And every time is a one-time thing. It, I won't repeat it like this in another service. It's right now, it's recorded, it's spoken, and it's timely, and it's for now. <clears throat> and the nation of Kenya... God is moving. The only hope is the real revival. The rise of righteous men in the church. But Father, we thank you that November 5th, 2024 is a historic day for the, a victory for the righteous. The righteous policies for the sanctity of life, for the sanctity of the borders, for the sanctity of 
the country, for the economy, for international relations. You know, let me tell you about the, the hand of God that's on Donald Trump. He showed up at the Al Smith dinner. It's an, it's an annual uh, dinner by, run by the Catholics. Very powerful people in New York, the, the Catholic Church, very powerful. And the Vatican and Rome, they're very rich. They're billionaires. Though they make the people take a vow of poverty, let me tell you, the Pope doesn't live a poor life. <laughs> they have art on the walls worth hundreds of millions of dollars everywhere. Pal the Vatican inside is like a palace. It's like, it's like a series of palaces. That's not poverty. Anyway. And... Uh, <clears throat> a lot of people that hate him were there in the room. People on the other side. He won them all over. Do you know when he finished speaking, they stood up, all of them, even his enemies, and gave him a standing ovation. And the woman, she didn't show up. And offended all of them because she wouldn't even show up because she knew it would be a disaster. Trump ruled the whole room, even people that hate him. Enemies, half and half. People, some people that love him, some people that hate him. And these are, these are not small people. These are industrialists, bankers, venture capitalists, billionaires. Billionaires, high, powerful, strong-minded people. And you could see the faces of some of them, like, like as he was talking, they were like almost going to manifest. And he just began to tell some jokes. And everybody, even his arch enemy in the, in the Senate, Chuck Schumer, who I know, in New York, he's on the liberal side. Very evil policies. He actually got him to laugh. Well, what kind of man is that? So guess what? He went to see uh, Kim Jong-un in North Korea, right? Put him down. He dealt with Iran. Put him down. These other ones are giving money to Iran. And they're giving money to the Hamas, and they're giving money to the Hezbollah, to Lebanon. They're giving money to terrorists. When the hurricanes destroyed the southeast of America, and hundreds of people are dead, bodies are floating in the water, houses are destroyed, even tornadoes came through, and the government is actually stopping the progress now, this government in America, from sending the relief that they had. And they're doing research to find out that the money was taken from the FEMA, which is a rescue, emergency rescue uh, fund, and they were sent to these terrorists overseas. Can you have someone like that in leadership in your country and expect to succeed? Turncoats, sellouts for the enemy. What's wrong with them? How could someone in their right mind do something like that? They are full of the devil. And I prophesy and command and say they are fired in the name of Jesus. Get out of the White House. Get out of Washington. Go home and whatever you want to do with yourself. Get out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, whoever is still on the fence about the vote, let it pour in and let Donald J. Trump win by a landslide. And it doesn't have to be a landslide. He just has to get all the states. Da, da, da. Boom. 270, he's declared the winner. And this, I saw a vision, this one. This is about to happen. And he's promised on day one to reverse evil policies and change certain things that are bad. And he'll do it. When he was brought in in 2016, it was January 21st, 2017, was his first day in office. I got a report sent to me uh, the first 100 days. They always do a thing on the president, the first 100 days. Now, the president of Kenya, I don't know what to say. What happened there? I'll leave that alone. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, 100 days, <clears throat> and we're praying for the Kenyan government. Hello? We're praying for the president. We're praying for the people. We're praying for those in authority that... Things can go well in Kenya. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Let's pray on that. I don't want to be too much in a hurry that I don't take time. I feel like I'm out of breath already. I want to, I want to finish this. I want to keep going. But let, let's just stop for a minute. Let's pray for Kenya right now. Because we're here. Let's pray. Let's pray. <clears throat> we pray that the mighty hand of God, Father, will come upon every political leader and rid them of their corrupt hearts. 
And rip every demon off of them and cause the visitation of the Holy Ghost. Cause the favor of, of, of God to come through them to the people. They've been elected to help people, not to take things for themselves. And this thing about the airport is disgusting. We cancel it again in Jesus' name. You're going to give it to this guy. Are you joking? For what? For money? Hell will be waiting for you. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Let's pray. Pray. I don't hear nobody sitting there. Okay. I'll pray in the Holy Ghost. Someone said, can God use me to pray for something big to happen? Absolutely, yes. Whoever would ever tell you, oh, you're nothing, you're a small person, go away, you're wrong. We never look at somebody based on where they are today. We look at their future. And let me tell you, let me tell you how you can know somebody's good future. If they're willing to learn along the way and become better at what they're doing every time. If they're not doing that, there's no hope. <clears throat> if you don't have a better attitude next time and you want to fix something better next time and you're more attentive next time, you're not, you're not going up. Because I'll tell you a principle in the kingdom. We have to show our, our loyalty and our diligence to God and then he will promote us. Promotion doesn't come just from prayer or you looking nice or desiring something. It comes from good management in your life. It means also to show your loyalty and your faithfulness and your obedience to God. Then he sees that you're, you're, you're worthy of promotion. You know, some are hired, some are fired. <laughs> some are promoted, some are left where they are. You know, it's up, but it's up to us. So, Lord, we cancel every <coughs> agenda of the evil one. It's coming in through the government. Amen. And we close those doors in Jesus' name Amen. against them. And I thank you, Lord, as I've said so many times. I need to say it on this message because I can't just hope that someone saw another message that I said it somewhere in the midst of a one-hour message or whatever. I'd like to have enough people that we can take the clips of everywhere I've said anything like that, just make it little short clips and put it all across the social media where in the process of doing that, but that takes time. But I have said it many times, <clears throat> that God is going to visit politicians. I pray he's going to do it in America, too. He's going to do it in Europe, too. He's going to do it, in, and he's going to do it in Kenya. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, visit them. Knock them off their beasts. Knock them off themselves. Knock them off their high horses. I remember one guy, I, don't, I, I can't say the name now, but I, I, I wouldn't say, I shouldn't say the name. But one guy, he just was so, he looked so arrogant, you know? And he was talking about himself and what he has, and it's like, people are like, what? Why would you say that to hurting people? Do you know when I go to the supermarket and I go to buy things, myself, myself, as blessed as I am, I almost cry when I think about people. How do you afford f good food? You go to restaurants in Nairobi, you can't find nothing. It's all rubbish. These, 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 these evil people that own restaurants or hotels or whatever, they just get the cheapest, what word can I use? Incompetent people, and they don't care. They'll burn everything, they'll mess it up, they'll, they'll destroy the food. And they just figure out how they can make money. I'd like to go grab that man, not the manager, the owner, and grab him by the neck and shake him and say, look here, you're playing with hellfire. You, 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 you may not like me saying that. You may not even know who I am now or when I leave you. But I'm, I'm warning you, repent and stop it. Because you're abusing people for money. I had some pastor take me to... A restaurant, and it seemed like it was fresh food, like it was okay. So I had a, a boss from the Red Cross. That even rhymes. A boss from the Red Cross. He, he wanted to meet with me. So I said, well, I was going to that mall anyway because I had to pick up my, uh, some shoes that I was having something done on the shoes. So I was going to be there anyway. So I said, well, let's, let's uh, meet there. I know a place upstairs we can go. 
Do you know what they did? Listen to me. Do you know what they did? And you ask the waiter, and the lady just goes, they just make some excuse. I really hate that. Don't do that. Let me give you some advice if you want to grow in things. When, when a leader or a boss asks you a question, don't come up with some answer, oh, blah, 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 like it's like this. Say, I'm sorry, I want it to be better too, and can I even ask your advice? How can we make it better? And I promise you, sir, we'll make it better. That's the thing to say. Those are the right words, not like, oh, well, it's because of this. I know that already. What are you trying to irritate me? You're telling me, tell me something I don't know. Tell me it's going to be better the next time. That's the only reason I'm talking. You know, sometimes I'll say something and people go, oh, yeah. I wasn't, go I wasn't talking to talk. I'm asking a question. I want information. I want the intel. Sometimes when you're doing something, you should just tell the boss, like, okay, I called this person, I called this person, I did this, I did this, this is how it is. I, okay, I got the status now. I got the feedback. I got the status. I wanted the information. That's all I ever wanted. I didn't have time to bring up a conversation. I'm busy. I'm running to another meeting. I just want to know what is happening with this. Yes? Lift your hands if you understand me. That's how you do it. And if you keep like that and you keep producing things, you'll get promoted. And if not by that person in particular or that organization, you'll get promoted somewhere else. Say with me, I'm going to do it right. And then God will bless me. People want God to bless you in advance and you haven't done anything. Why should he bless you? <laughs> Why? Hello. Hello. Hi. Wait, wait. Oh, bless me, bless me. For what? What did you even do to make the world a better place? What are you doing? Are you doing anything to make anybody happy? Besides your, maybe yourself. Even you, you're not happy. Can I tell you what makes you happy? When things are working well and you're working well, you'll feel good about yourself. Like Donald Trump said, I'm exhilarated. I'm not tired. I haven't arrested you. Well, who is she to say? He, 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 I love, I wish you could see that clip on the YouTube. She goes, he goes, she's a loser. <laughs> and my friend, the evangelist, he was hosting the news thing and he started to laugh when he said that. I was like, I was getting excited. I started to shout. I was like going like, oh, hallelujah. I was so excited. I started to shout. I started to shout at me. Trump, 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 go Trump, go Trump, go Trump. We love you. We love you. Someone said, ah, that guy. Yeah, that guy what? The media lied to you. They told you all these stories. What is a billionaire man to do when he's a heathen? Of course he's going to do funny things. Yeah, but now he's, he's been presented with the gospel. There's even a clip on TikTok. He's even talking about the devil. What the devil, you know, what the devil tries to do to your vision. This is a man from the world who's been touched by God. He said, she's a loser. He said, I haven't rested. I've been 45 days day, from early morning to late night, and I haven't stopped. And I'm not even tired. Why? Because I'm right. Because I'm on a mission. Lift your hands when you're on God's mission. Oh, oh, wow. When you do things to advance what he wants done, oh, you'll get blessed. It's guaranteed. You know, when you're doing nothing, it's not that guaranteed. Maybe by mercy. How many know God can have mercy on you because he loves you? But how many know if you've been working for the boss and then you need his provision? Hello? And then he comes through with the provision. It's not an accident. It's not mercy. It's payment. Someone say it's not mercy. It's payment. Look at the person next to you. You don't even something. Don't know what I'm talking about. Look at the person next to you and say it's not mercy. It's payment. Talk it strong to them. Say it's not mercy. It's payment for your labor. You work. You're gonna get paid. And if it's not by this person, it'll come through somebody else. 
Even when God lets somebody like you and, and be favorable to you, that's the gift of God. But it also works in the way of provision for you. Favor produces 95% of your prosperity. The other 5% is maybe just being in the right place at the right time. But favor, somebody liking you, somebody appreciating you, somebody feeling the value of you. I always say people that when they look at Donald Trump and they have a, a big problem with him, they're influenced by a demon. Don't worry, even people in my own family in New York, <laughs> they're on the other side, some of them. We don't talk much, but I, I don't have time to have a conversation with them. Because I would just say, Trump, 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 and they'll manifest. Wow, how can you go that? And we'll have to click the phone. So I don't even bother. Deception in the world. The media, they're liars. Can you believe this woman accused him of being tired and not okay when he's the most energized and the most okay of anyone? And that's the lie that she told. And the media loves it because they're trying to put her there. Yeah. But it's a total lie. Lift your hands say, every lie is being exposed. Father, for the next 17 days before November 5th, and even after, for the process to continue, that every lie, every wrong thing, every evildoer will be exposed. Father, every business that we're involved in, everything that's wrong, that's going on around us, expose it and crush it to nothing. The enemy's plan cannot work. Someone said, oh, well, is God judging America? Is God judging the world? Is it the end times? If you talk like that, the devil has gotten in your head. Let me tell you what the word of God says. We tread on serpents and scorpions, and we crush them under our feet. Luke 10, 19. Hello? And nothing shall by any means hurt us. We have the victory in Christ Jesus. We are the rulers of the earth. Until the trumpet blows... I'm blessed. When the trumpet blows, I'm leaving. Until then, I'm blessed. Jesus said, occupy till I come. Don't give in to the enemy. The people even preachers, some preachers talk like that. Said, you, you're an antichrist in the pulpit. You're an antichrist, little a. You're not a you're little small. You're anti the Christ. And you say you're preaching for Jesus when you're preaching defeat and unbelief. No, like my friend in America and my other friends, they were supposed to take it back. And we have prayed and we're getting the results. Lift your hands. And things are going to go God's way. America's going to go well. Kenya's going to go well. Things are going to go well in Africa. People say so many bad things about Africa. I have only good things to say about Africa, except the things I see that are bad are many. And it's horrible, but uh, ultimately we have to prophesy and declare that everything is changing for the better, for the people of Africa, for the African nations, <clears throat> and to God be the glory for the results <clears throat> of all that he's about to do. In Jesus' name. I have two books here, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. And the Benefits of Excellence, I found another one that I had a few copies of. This is a great book, and I found every scripture in the Bible that has the word excellent or excellence. And I put it in this book. And with uh, salvation prayer, a lot of testimonies, there are many things in here that are really great. And uh, 40 diamond keys on principles of excellence, 40 action keys. This one is an A to Z of the laws of success, there are a thousand shillings. And uh, if you want to sow a seed to our m or whatever, ask somebody for my number. I guess people have my number. Anyway, let's pray. Father, thank you for what you're doing in our day. Thank you for the victory. Thank you for everything good that's going to happen for us now. And the reward is sure. We thank you for the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich and has no sorrow. We thank you, Lord, for the evidence of your Reward is sure. I could see it in the air. I could see the angels. And this is my prophetic word here today that you're going to cause our reward to come for our faithfulness. This is the word of the Lord for you and for me right now. One thing, just one thing I want to say, only one. Well, I've said many things, 
about all these issues going on and that have happened, that are happening now and are about to happen. But one prophecy, one thing I have is that God is arranging our reward. And it's going to be huge in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. God bless you. I'll talk to you on the next one. Dear brethren, in Psalms 119, 105, the Bible says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Truly, God has sent prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV to proclaim and declare his word of abundance and prosperity prophetically unto the nations. Thus, brothers and sisters in Christ, I urge you, just as the Bible says in Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet, as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. Let us welcome and embrace the prophet of God by supporting his ministry. You can sow a seed, you can send your love offering, you can support or partner in the ministry program using the details displayed on your screen. For when the prophet of God decrees a blessing upon you, indeed, you shall be blessed.